How many of you have printed a statement on a super bill? How many of you printed a claim on a plain piece of paper? <laughs> With 15, we are giving you the option to set default printer options for all of your reports. So if I want all of my claims to go to one particular printer, I can choose, all right, I'm gonna send it to this printer, click OK. You have all the ability to specify the tray that it's going to, so if you have one printer with different uh, trays for different types of paper, you can default that out so that every time you print claims, it goes to a claim form. Every time you print a claim, it goes to a claim form. You love it. In the deposit list, how do you tell where a payment was applied to? You can do it right now. How do you do it? The detail button. Now, what happens if you want to get that printed out? Well, I don't know. You can't until now, where we've given you the option to print the grid and get your detail for how you've applied the payment out onto paper so you can compare it against your EOBs and you're not going paper to screen, paper to screen. Okay, let's go one step deeper into applying a payment to charge. What is the rejection code field used for? To put notes on a statement. Why do you want to put notes on a statement? We just talked about this. So they don't call. This is our call reduction feature. Now what happens if the, the note that you want to put on a statement isn't in your rejection code list? What do you have to do? You have to go out, go into the list, make a new one, go back in, remember where you were, go back to it, and then enter the note, right? Why is that? Because F8 and F9 weren't there to create new ones or edit the codes that were there for them. <laughs> and finally, in the deposit list, we are letting you close a case directly from the deposit list. So if you want to close out, <laughs> as the balance goes down to zero, you can come in here, close the case. You don't have to remember to go back in there from another screen. How does transaction entry sort? It's order of entry, right? How do you want it to sort? By date, by, depends on what you're looking for, I guess is the answer. And you've never been able to change how the sorting works until now. You can sort by just about any field in transaction entry simply by clicking on the grid. Both sides up and down. This next one was a very easy change, um, but I sat in an office in Denver, it was actually a dermatology office, um, and I watched them, they had patients who had 30 different cases. And they used the mouse a lot. I thought most billers didn't use the mouse, but they did. And I watched them in transaction entry, choose their patient, choose the down arrow on the case, and they'd scroll all the way to the bottom and pick the last one. They did this over and over and over again. Now those of you who are sitting up front can see what the change is. In version 15, we switched the sorting around on the cases on the drop-down and transaction entry. So the newest ones are up at the top and the oldest ones are at the bottom. How can you sort in claim management? Is it possible to sort claim management? Yeah. yeah? But what happens when you go out of it and come back in? 
goes back the way that it was. It goes back to having those old claims that you never want to see again up at the top and you have to click. Well, starting with version 15, if I sort and bring my newest claims up to the top, the next time I go back in, it's going to remember the way that I sorted. What do you use the quick ledger for? The, the answer is this is where you are when the patient does call. This is what you're doing when the patient calls in and wants to know what's going on with their account. And very often you're using this and you want to enter notes about why the patient is calling, right? And the way you had to do that before is find the transaction that you needed. You want the quick ledger so you can see all the different cases on one screen. But then you'd have to go back to transaction entry in order to do any notes onto that particular transaction. Starting with 15, if you do hit note, you have the ability to enter or edit notes right from the quick ledger. Very good. The, the collection list is where you go to go through and call the people who aren't paying. You want to proactively bring in that money. In version 14, if you were in the collection list and you wanted to go into the quick ledger where you could see more detailed information about it, it wouldn't bring up the chart number for the patient that you had highlighted in the collection list. We have updated that so that the collection list is going to automatically go right into the chart that you have open so that we're allowing you to use that as a feature that will um, that'll work more seamlessly with the rest of Metasoft. Um, if I go into my scheduler and I enter Steve Nash, that's the last chart number that I, that I enter. I hit save. I'm now ready to go into transaction entry and enter a copay for Steve Nash or, or to enter in my, my charges for him. On the chart number field, I either have to remember Steve's chart, type it in, search for him, click from the down, uh, the down arrow, or starting with version 15, I can hit shift F4 and it's going to remember the last chart number that I selected. This is going to go from all of the chart number fields within the program. And you can go from here over to the deposit list, wherever you want to go, shift F4 will bring up the last chart number you chose. I'm not going to show it to you. I will tell you how many of you have ever been told to run file maintenance. And when it's going through and running, it just says it's processing, doesn't tell you what it's working on, which file has the problem. Now when you run file maintenance, it'll say I'm working on the claim file, I'm working on the transaction file, I'm working on this file, and it'll make your interactions with ASCOMP a whole lot easier for support when there is a problem. And finally, I'm not going to steal too much thunder from Trevor Pavich, but Metasoft version 15 is coinciding with the release of Metasoft Clinical, uh, which is a CCHIT certified EMR. And we are extremely excited about the release of Metasoft Clinical, and we're going to talk a whole lot more about that later on tonight. So stick around.